Hi, and welcome back. Uh, I guess this is the second uh, portion that we're going to be going through. Uh, hopefully everybody had all of their interfacing and cutting and stuff done. Uh, this is the next piece, uh, the section that we're going to be doing, um, we'll be getting this far. Uh, we'll get our zippers in, we'll get the uh, contrast uh, pieces on, the top stitching done, um, and this is what we end up with the back, and we'll do all the steps to get there. So again, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, uh, if you find value in it, please like my uh, my videos and uh, subscribe to my channel i'd appreciate that and keep those comments coming i just really love hearing from you all and um, finding out what you're thinking and some ideas uh, get to exchange some stuff i'm really enjoying this so again uh, thanks a lot and good luck getting this one done thanks i've never made my own piping before uh, so this is going to be an experiment for me too but um, what I've started off, I figured out that I'm going to need about an inch and a quarter wide for me to have the proper measurements when I'm done. Uh, they didn't have the proper cording, so I have to improvise. This is actually like a drawstring cord, but it is, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to work. Um, it'll be enough that it gives a little bit of a round edge to it and stuff. So, um, next time, hopefully they'll have what I need. So I guess I should probably show you um, exactly how I came up with this quarter inch right here. My measurement that I came up with was an inch and a quarter. In her instructions, she, uh, Celine says that between the cording and the edge, you need three eighths of an inch. If it's more than that, if the piping that you've purchased is wider than that, you want to trim that down to uh, three eighths of an inch. So I know this is going to be my little sewing line, uh, my little basting line. So I wrapped this around and figured out that that's where my mark is going to be. So I took that, measured it, and it's an inch and a quarter. So that's how I came up with the width of this. Now I'm going to um, be folding this over, but I'm going to be using some tape, uh, some double-sided tape to hold this down. So that's where I just decided that a quarter inch, I'm going to use quarter inch tape, um, and I'll just tape down the center of this, and then I can wrap this over and fold it down. So that will, and then I can stitch up against my cording. So that's how I came up with these measurements. This tape that I'm using is actually just a little less than a quarter of an inch, somewhere between a quarter and eighth of an inch. So I'm going to go all the way along and I'm going to put my tape along that straight line that I just drew at a quarter inch. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that all the way along. So I'm putting my, putting my cord inside here. So I'm just going to go slowly along. I'm taking my tape off and I'm just going to fold this over onto itself, trying to keep my cord, make sure my cord stays on that one edge. Tuck it in there nice and tight and press down on my double sided tape. And I'm just, as I go along, I'm just going to put a few um, clips on there just to make sure that it stays where it's supposed to do, go. So I'm just going to do that through the whole thing. Roll that in tight and clip it. Before I continue on um, with the actual assembly, I'm going to stop and just answer um, or comment, I guess, on some questions that were asked. Now, this is PUL. It's uh, polyurethane um, coated. It's a, oh, yeah, of course, because this is <laughs> interface, so you can't see it now. But it's a woven or a, a knit fabric with a polyurethane coating on the one side. So this is actually shiny, it's plasticky, uh, it can be wiped off. I was asked about um, if it didn't melt when I was fusing it. And my answer is no, it didn't. 
Um, I had really good luck with it. What I did was I had shiny side down. I'm, I'm probably using it backwards for what the intended purpose is. They use it for uh, plastic pants for babies and that kind of stuff. So really the, the knit side would be the right side. But I'm using the shiny side as my right side. So when I put it down on my press, I put the shiny side down on the non-heated surface. Then I put my interfacing down and then I put a pressing cloth over the whole thing and pressed it down as long as when I lifted it up I didn't fold it and touch because this was really hot if I had touched these together it would have kind of stuck so as long as I was really careful with that I was okay these are the Peltex pieces on my vinyl I have no problem uh, fusing my Peltex instead of gluing it. Whatever works for you is what you should do. Whatever feels the best. Um, this works for me, so um, I'll just go with it because it's easier. Okay, so back to the assembly. So I have my bottom piece. I have my Peltex fused to it. Now I've got my foam interfacing. What we're going to do is I'm going to clip, it doesn't take a lot of clips on here, but I'm going to just clip this together and I'm going to zigzag around the whole outside. This ter serves two purposes. First of all, it attaches the foam to the bottom, but Zigzagging actually kind of um, pinches this down a little bit and it takes some of the bulk out of that seam. I've heard ladies talk about um, using their serger and that's fine too. Um, if that works for you, then that's great. I, I have a serger. Um, I just find it's just as easy, again, for me to just go ahead and do a zigzag stitch around it. So we're doing that on the bottom and we're also going to do it, these are the side pieces. We're going to do the exact same thing on them as well. So we're going to do everything all at once. So just get all of this uh, zigzagging done. So I'm getting ready to zigzag. I have my zigzag stitch set at five because I want a fairly wide zigzag here. I don't want just a little tiny one. And I've, I've spaced it out. It's, I'm, my stitch length is three. So I'll do a little bit. I think it's probably going to be just fine. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and go all the way around. And you can do your needle over past the edge here if you want. Um, whatever, whatever works for you. Now I have my two side pieces with the foam attached to them and my bottom piece. So that is all ready to go. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put the piping on the side pieces. We're just going to um, baste stitch that on. In the instructions she mentions um, start an inch up from the bottom. So I'm going to mark on each side my inch when we put our piping on we're going to start at that inch mark and we're actually going to just fold this around and start clipping on. So to make this easier, first of all, this little part right here, I'm going to notch that out. And I'm just going to go up to uh, my stitching line, that, ba or that base stitch that I did. So that will actually just make that curve over there a little bit easier. The other thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go around these curves. So 
I'm going to kind of figure out where that curve is and I'm going to clip my vinyl up again just up to my stitching line so I don't stitch through it but I'm going to go all the way around and you're going to see how much easier that is to go around. If you have biased um, tape or if you're using um, prepared and it's fabric um, piping then you're not going to have this problem because it's cut on the bias so it actually just kind of curves around and stretches for you quite easily. So in order to do that, to I don't need to clip everything all the way along. So I'm going to use, this is a little chalk marker. And I'm just going to kind of, this is where the start of my curve is, roughly. Here it goes straight again so I don't need to. I'm going to give myself a little bit of room here. And again, I'm going to clip quite close together. This is probably about... Uh, a little more than half an inch, maybe five-eighths of an inch or so. There we go. Again, starting so that this is curved here. And we're going to sew that into our seam allowance. So you can see just by clipping this that those are opening up and they're just letting me curve this around without too much resistance. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to mark again on my vinyl in between where this curves around and I'm going to clip that as well. So I have my piping just clipped on here right now. And I'm going to go around and I'm just going to do about a quarter inch. Um, I don't need to get right up to my stitching. I just need for my piping to be attached. Uh, we'll worry about the getting up to up close and covering that stitching later on. So I'm just going to go ahead and, um, and just stitch around here and I'll be back. So you can see I have it again just base stitched on and I'm just going to clip those little extra corners off on both of them. So those are ready to go. The next step is to deal with the lining. So what we want to do is cut this lining in half. So again, on my templates, I've punched holes at the halfway point, the marks. So I'm just going to go and use my pen and mark those. And I'm going to use my rotary cutter. So there we have the two halves. I'm going to deviate a little bit from what uh, Selene has in her instructions. Now, what she's asked you to do in the next step is to take your two halves and mark on here the rectangles for your zippers. Because I've done, I think, a really good job, um, I've been very thorough about making sure that my fusible fleece is done on the right, um, in the right spacing and it's nice and even and straight. For myself, this is a better guide for me than to have two of them. Well, I'll show you when we get to um, actually sewing it. Um, she's suggesting this be flipped over to mark, sew on those marks, then flip it over and anywhere where your stitching has gone into your fusing or your fleece to trim that fleece back. So the way the method that I'm going to be using, we actually use that fleece as the guide. So there won't be any clipping. So I'm going the next step is to mark centers of pretty much everything. So I'm going to start with this. And it doesn't really matter what method you use of marking 
my erasable marker will, or my air erase marker will stay on there long enough for me to get this done. So, marking my centers there. And again, these are the halves of my lining. I'm going to mark both sides. I'm going to do that with the other side and also all of my lining pieces. Just need to mark the top on all of those. And I'm going to finish those out. So now I'm what I'm going to be doing here is um, taking my lining pieces. I'll be doing both of these and laying them over top of the main body piece. So to do that, I, where I've marked my centers on both sides, I'm going to pin this. You can clip it, whatever works. So we have this. The, this is the same piece um, I um, screwed up when I was uh, pinning it. I'm pinning the edges thinking I'm sewing here. I wasn't, but um, the same thing applies here. So this is all lined up here. I flip this over. We're not going to be sewing this edge, so there's no point in pinning that. We're going to be sewing along here. So I want my pins out of the way so that I can just go ahead and sew these down. Now I'm just going to double check because to me this line maybe looks like it might be a little bit out. So I'm going to go from the top and the bottom and it is slightly, I have kind of a fine tip pen here and I want these ones as straight as I can so um, I'm just being a little extra picky. Just going to double check. The rest of my lines seem pretty good. So, so that's the only one. Um, and I mean, it's out um, maybe a millimeter or two kind of in the center there. But for me, um, I know that if I at least draw that line and sew on that, that I'm going to be accurate. Go. On something like this, I like to start part way part way down because instead of back stitching um, I'm just gonna when I come back around I'm gonna just stitch over my starting a little ways this is just a personal preference this is just what I do I'm gonna just set this so that it stops a needle down at my corner following the line of my fusible fleece. a little ways over. And there we go. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So this is what I have. I've got, um, this is the side with the fleece on it. This is my lining side. If I want to double check, for me, take my template, put it over top, the bottom one I'm bang on, um, the top one I'm out just slightly, maybe just a little bit short on each end, but um, it's a few millimeters, it's nothing too serious. This <laughs> My camera is a little bit fisheye, so it kind of maybe looks like these are a little bit wider and go narrower, 
but it actually um, is they're straight perpendicular to each other. So our next part is we're gonna we need to cut these because we're gonna turn everything over. So I'm gonna go on this side, just personal choice, and I'm gonna go right down the center. Now I'm gonna stay back or up from the bottom here and back from when I get to the top. Sorry, that's out of the screenshot here, but um, it's easier for me to cut going this way. So I'm just gonna get a slice all the way down the center. You can mark these first if you want to. These are half an inch wide, so I'm using my quarter inch mark. Now she's suggesting a quarter inch, or sorry, half an inch from the end. And diagonal lines going to each corner. So I'm gonna do that for all of my corners. I'm actually, I'm just gonna mark for myself. center at half an inch. And to complete these, because I have most of it done, this one I'm actually right at my mark, right here. Oh, let's go to the one I marked. So I'm just going to clip up to there, and I'm going to go right as far as I can into the corner without cutting my thread, my little stitching line there. And I'm just going to go ahead and do both of those. So we're just going to, I'm going to turn these out and then we're going to move on to zipper tape. So we're going to take this and we're going to flip this all the way to the inside. It's not really going to stay until we actually um, press it down. But that's what's going to get going. Um, do both of those sides. I'm just gonna clip a bit just to hold it. It'll just hold it steadier, I think, um, when I take it to the iron and press it down. And I'll fine tune these, roll them a little bit better and stuff too when I'm pressing. So I'm just gonna do that with both of them. Yeah, sometimes I don't know <laughs> what I what I should and shouldn't show you, whether you really need to be coming to me with to my ironing board and for me to show you how to iron, but um, there's but then I get over here and I do half of it and I think, you know, I, I should just show them that. <laughs> um, I'm fighting with this a little bit because I've got lots of stiff interfacing and um, and because of that things don't they don't roll the right way and I'm really messing around with it a lot so I've got my clips in here just kind of to hold everything until I can get it positioned but steam and ironing is your best friend sometimes um, now I'm you won't be able to see this but I'm not actually pressing my iron down I'm just about an inch or so above 
and this is hard to roll, it's hard to position. I'm just going to give it a real good steam. Of course, I have my industrial iron. Ooh, lots of steam there. Give, her, give myself a facial. So the steam and the heat just totally relax the fibers of the fabric. So then I can roll back, roll my lining back out of the way. It makes it a whole lot easier. So now I can press again with some steam. And it's hot. I'm going to flip this over because it's easier to work with for me. more steam and I just roll this back and I just work at it until I get it where I'm happy and give it a really good press. So there I go. And when I pin, I can roll that lining in under a little bit more with the with the zipper. So that's that. That's my little pressing trick. I'm using zipper tape, so now I have to get my zipper tabs ready to go. In the last video, I had you guys, if you're using zipper tape, I owe you an apology. Um, I had you interfacing the pieces for the zipper tabs. We don't interface them. They will, they will get way too thick to work with because you're folding it so many times. Um, so this one, we're going to go, now this is the, the two inch wide and we're working with two and a half this way. These ones, we fold up half an inch. So I find that it's faster and easier for me, more accurate, um, just to mark an inch. Then I'm gonna go ahead and fold both of these down. I'm just, I'm gonna press, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna press it all. Then this goes in half so that you have a, a line and these go in half again. So what we're going to end up with is this little rectangle like this with no raw edges showing. So I'm going to go ahead and just press all four of mine. So now I have my two pieces of zipper tape prepared. These are 14 inches long each. I'm using a number five coil zipper. So these are just going to go over the ends I'm just going to clip that on. I'm going to sew an eighth of an inch all the way around each one. I'm going to do that with all four of them. So now I have my okay. zipper tapes um, all prepared. Now if you're using just a, a prepared zipper, uh, you're good to go as well. I'm going to start off with centering my zipper. Now this is just the method that I use for putting in my zipper. Um, I'm going to mark, I know my line is here, I'm just so I have a reference when it's underneath and I've done that on both sides. And I'm measuring um, this way to kind of make sure that it's that it's centered, that it isn't uh, too far off. And I'm also going to mark because I'm going to be actually using um, double-sided tape instead of pins to hold this in. So I want it to go back just a little bit, but those marks are going to be for my double-sided tape. So I'm going to do that on both the zippers. I've got marks actually on, on here to mark the end of my openings. And I'm just going to go back a little bit more on each side with the double-sided tape. So I've got my really thin tape again 
and I'm just going to go right on the edge of my zipper. And I could move this if I want to as well so that I don't I'm not dealing with the hump there, but I'm go all the way back. I'm going to do that on both sides of both zippers. So now I'm going to just take off both of these. I want to make sure this is stuck down to the zipper really nice. And that exposes the glue. On the first one I did, <laughs> um, make sure that your zippers are both going the same way because I had one going one way, the other one going the other. So I had to pull it out. But this is where it's not really tricky, but um, you've got sticky stuff on one side. Um, so I'm going to try and place this over my zipper. I do have my reference point so that's why I don't have to mess around too much. I can uh, be fairly confident when I set it down that at least I have it centered. And I'm just going along and making sure that this is nice and straight before I press it down too hard. And I can still kind of position things a little bit. And I'm going to do this, the same thing for the second one as well. So now I'm going to top stitch all the way around to put my zipper in. Now I'm on my industrial. Um, there's no need. I could easily do this on my domestic machine. I'm just um, liking the <laughs> the nice top stitching because I can use a Tex 90 thread so I can get um, stitching that really shows. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. I have to kind of start off slow here. I have some learning to do and some work to do on my precision with this thing, so have to bear with me. Now I'm going to get my zipper out of the way. I moved it back and I get it underneath the zipper foot or under the foot here. There, now I'm smooth sailing for the rest of the way. a little bit. And I'm just going to stitch once again over top of my other stitching instead of back stitching. Mm -hmm. 
when I don't back stitch on my industrial, I like to actually go to the back and pull these threads through. If I possibly can anyway. This one I might have sewn over so it's kind of stitched right in there. If I want to be double cautious and sure, I'll just put a little little dot of fray check on there and then it'll keep that stitch from ever coming out. So that's my top stitching. So here we have all the top stitching done. Uh, the zippers, they both open up. <laughs> They're both the same way, everything. Ah, it's a good day. Um, so then the next thing is the zipper pulls. So that's these ones and they're just going to go, they're kind of more of a decorative idea. So with the zipper pulls, we're going to just fold them into each other like this. And then they get folded in half this way. So I'm just going to go and press and it's going to be top stitched around three sides because one is going to, only the finished edges are going to show anyway. So I'm going to do that with both of these as well. I have my pull tabs um, top stitched here ready to go. The positioning of them is at the bottom of the zipper. The opening is over here. She suggests half an inch um, below the raw edge. So just for reference here, that's where we're going to put them. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to base that down. Um, I want to only go through um, the top. I don't want to, I'm going to move this out of the way. And show. And it's going to be a little tricky to get in there. Now I guess I can just clip it too for now. So I'm just so showing I'm, you here, I've got, um, this is the inside, this is actually my lining. What I've done is I've just folded this back and pinned it out of the way because I want to be able to baste on here. So this is where the, the tabs are. So I want to be able to just do a basting stitch across there and I don't want to go through all of, all of the layers. So now I've just gone ahead and, and basted those down. So I've just done about an eighth of an inch or so um, seam allowance. It'll keep everything out of the way um, when we actually go to now put on the contrast pieces. I'm just going to show you on, I'm doing the second one, I sewed my first one on and I am going to take you over to my sewing machine um, and uh, and show you but um, just for clarification this piece kind of narrows a little bit that's the top that or that's where we're that's where our seam is for attaching it to the rest so don't use the fat part use the thinner part there will be just a little bit of overhang on each end but that's okay so I'm gonna actually I don't even need to take you to the sewing machine to show you this but it makes sense to sew it here and follow this line, but it's a lot easier. You're not dealing with all of the bulk and, and it's sitting up too high, especially on the other side. So go from this side and use a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Uh, when, when we flip it over, if there's uh, a fair amount of Peltex in there, we'll just kind of trim that back a little bit. But um, it's much easier because it lays flatter because if you look at it this way there's humps especially on the other side because we've got um, the zipper pulls to go through as well so um, so lay it down this way on your sewing machine and just do a straight stitch across. I've actually managed not to catch my Peltex um, in my stitching here so um, I'm all right with that. I'm going to take it to my industrial. I'm going to flip this over. All seams I want toward my uh, contrast piece and I'm going to top stitch on here um, through my vinyl. 
So this is what we have. Um, this is where we're at. We're going to stop here. Um, the next part is sewing on the sides and there is quite a bit to cover there. So I think I'm just going to do it in the next section. But this is what we've ended up with. We've got um, our lining pieces in here. Um, we've got our contrast on, we've got our zippers in, and um, I think we'll just leave it at that for now. Get this this far and um, then we're ready to move on to sewing all that lining in.